And so when he got back, <clears throat> Rome was overrun by the Goths in 410. And so the writers, the pagan writers were saying, well, the reason we got overrun is um, we had deserted our ancestral gods and uh, Rome uh, was supporting Christianity, Jesus. And so naturally the old uh, uh, gods were no longer protecting us. Well, this greatly angered Augustine. So he began to write the city of God to overthrow that concept mm -hmm. that, that you only flourished when you were faithful to your ancestral gods. And Augustine began to deal with just the history of Rome, and he showed that sometimes when Rome was following their gods, they got defeated, they had famines, they had all kinds of problems. Sometimes they flourished, so that you can't say this equals that. Masterful historical work by Augustine. Yes, and especially his third book sets out to demonstrate that in the history of Rome, you can't say if, you've, if you're faithful to them, they will always protect you. He then took his young disciple, Orosius, and commissioned him to write a history of the world beginning with the flood, the worldwide flood, and bring it up to this time, about 417 is when he finally published it, to show that all through history, God was controlling what happened to nations and that they flourished and didn't flourish necessarily whether they were supposed to be following God or not, that when Joseph was in Egypt, they had famine, da 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 the book is very boring mm. because he, he brings out historical points, but then he says, so see there, for five pages. This book became a standard historical textbook in the Middle Ages. Yes. It was well known then, and now there's still t about 200 copies extant, but almost no one knows about it. Okay, so what? In this work, Orosius says that the main reason the Senate now, turn the down, solution to the mystery. Yes, turn down the letter from uh, uh, Tiberius Caesar to make Jesus one of the gods was because the man he left in charge of Rome, Sejanus, that whom Philo says was a strong anti-Semitic, that he was strongly against it, that he took the floor of the Senate, gave a, 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 an oration against this because he also hated, hated Jews, he didn't want Jesus in there, and that that's the main reason the Senate... Uh, went with it. Now the reason that's important is Tacitus tells us that Sejanus was slain by the Praetorian Guard in the presence of the Roman Senate with their blessing because Tiberius found out he was trying to kill him, uh, uh, assassinate him so he could possibly become emperor. And Tacitus writing about 117 AD tells us the date, the date. that Sejanus was killed. Okay, October the 18th, are you ready? 31, 31 A.D. 31. Now, wait a minute. If Sejanus takes the floor to talk the Roman Senate out of making the resurrected Christ... The resurrected Christ. ...a god in 31 A.D., how could Jesus have been put to death in 33 or and even that, 32? That's right. It had to be prior and now, that falls into the AD. yes that falls exactly into our parameter of 30 AD so i have found uh, i've blundered into if you please of course we know the lord leads but yes. from a human standpoint i just blundered into it and i found this ancient work now sejanus or, or rather uh, Orosius sometimes is put down by critics as saying well he wasn't nearly as brilliant as as augustine or jerome big deal who was at that time certainly but August, Augustine says in, in his work, calls him a man of able mind. So uh, that's what Augustine thought of him. And he's the one that commissioned him to do the work. So we've solved the problem. Well, uh, Dr. Jones, you're, you're being very modest in this. Because of your background and the ability, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit drove you to a place where you would recognize this significance. Now, in these closing moments, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm of major significance. Uh, you stated, of course, up front, it's not the date that's important, even though we want to know the date. And on this program, you've solved that mystery for us. Thank you. Thank that's major. You. Thank you. But the most important thing is that Jesus Christ did die universally for our sins Amen. and was buried and rose again the third day according to the statement of Paul, according to the Old Testament forecast, and according to the reality of the Scriptures in the Gospel. Tell me in one minute, 
How important do you think the crucifixion of Jesus is? Had he not died for our sins, we would all still be lost in our sins. Yes. If Jesus doesn't pay for our sins, then it's up to us to pay for our sins. And the Bible teaches us that God is so holy that even the slightest offense against him, the only way to, to pay it off would be hell forever and ever. And there is not one sweet girl, there is not one pure mother, there is not a noble father, there is not an innocent person on the face of the globe able to satisfy the just demands, the righteous demands of a holy God against our sins. The only candidate is Jesus Christ. That's how important his crucifixion was, his suffering was, but it doesn't stop there. The gospel is not simply that Christ died for our sins, that he was literally buried. It was a literal fact of disposition. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the gospel. And he's alive at this moment. Right now, the Christ of the Bible, the one that uh, Dr. Floyd Nolan Jones has so brilliantly uh, referred to in the annals of history, and ferreting out the truth of the time. That individual is alive forever. The Bible says that all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Right now, he's asking for admission to your heart. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just pray this simple prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Right now, I open my heart to Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, resurrected, living for me, come in right now. Save me forever, and I will serve you with all my heart. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.